Hi guys, long time, no see. Um, the last time I posted a video on my channel was a week ago, an entire week ago. I had such a busy but such a great week, like the past week. Um, well, great minus the being ill. Um, but other than that, I had Big Beauty Day Out in London and Big Beauty Day Out in Manchester. If you guys came to those and I met you and you came and said hey, um, it was such a good time. I met so many lovely people and I was exhausted, but it was so good, like so many people were so lovely and yeah, but I'm back now, today is the weekend, I'm back, I'm ready to film and I thought I would kick it off with something that has just come out today as I'm filming this, it's Sunday and Urban Decay have just launched a new Urban Decay, what? <laughs> no. Nope. Urban Decay have just launched a new Game of Thrones collection. If you're not into Game of Thrones, you might not like this video, but quite a few people asked me um, if I would review this when I mentioned it in a previous video. Even if you're not a Game of Thrones fan, it's still makeup and it's still Urban Decay and I feel like it's going to be quite popular anyway. This video is not sponsored. Um, I've got the eyeshadow palette, which is the main one that... I was really, really excited to test and I've also got the highlighter palette as well. I did get this um, from Urban Decay as a PR package, which was so nice of them. I was actually going to buy it myself and like review the entire collection. However, um, today is the first day that I've been home in five days and I had a package with these two products in it and I thought I would just film it today, get it up for you guys so that you can, you know, decide whether or not you want to buy it. But them sending me the stuff does not affect my opinion on it in any way. If it sucks, I'm going to let you know. But if it's good, I'm hoping it'll be good because it looks really nice, then I will also let you know. Let's just get into it. So what I'm going to do first is all of the kind of like close-ups and like swatches and then I will use the products on my face like more towards the end. I'm actually a late bloomer in terms of watching Game of Thrones. I know it's been around for so many years now, but I've only recently started watching it. I'm currently trying to catch up as quick as I can, but I'm not going to be able to fully catch up before tomorrow. However, I have watched two seasons in the past week, which I think is pretty good going. Um, I'm up to season five, episode three. So this is the main, like, thing, star of the show of this collection. It's the eyeshadow palette. This one is 45 pounds, I think, which is an expensive eyeshadow palette. And there was a little bit of information here. It says, all will be available from the 14th of April exclusively at urbandecay.co.uk and nationwide from the 2nd of May. Um, yeah, the eyeshadow palette is 45 pounds. This is a hefty eyeshadow palette. I'm just gonna say now, like, this is not a travel friendly palette. It's freaking huge. But I think if you're like a hardcore Game of Thrones fan, I think it's it's kind of like more of a collector's item. The highlighter palette is definitely travel friendly. Um, ooh, look at that box design. This one is £25 and you get three shades in here. So I'm just gonna take this out of the box. On the back of the box, there's a little like overview of the shades that you get. And then this is the size of the actual eyeshadow palette. So you open it up like this and it's got a mirror, which is pretty handy. It's quite a big mirror as well. I think like you could probably have this like sitting on your desk or something. Um, and then it says on the front, Lannister, Targaryen, Baratheon, Stark, Ty oh, is it Tyrell or Tyrell? I don't know, Tyrell, Tyrell? They're all just spokes on a wheel. This one's on top and then that one's on top and on that, on, I can't read. Sometimes I genuinely like sit down and think to myself, I need to go back to school because like, my brain power is really lacking right now. They're all just spokes on a wheel. This one's on top, then that one's on top, and on and on it spins, crushing those on the ground. Daenerys Targaryen. Nice! And it's got like the map and stuff, and then this, it's literally got like a three-dimensional cardboard pop-up iron throne. And then just underneath it says, never forget what you are, the rest of the world will not. Wear it like armor and it can never be used to hurt you, Tyrion Lannister. And then the actual eyeshadow palette itself pulls out from the bottom like this and it is fully removable. So I guess, I was gonna say, I guess you could just take this with you, but then you need like a lid for it. And then the palette is split into like four different sections. So you've got Hard Home, Winterfell, King's Landing and Bay of Dragons. And then each of them has got like a little kind of like color coordinating five eyeshadow set. But all of the names are very kind of like Game of Thrones fitting, obviously. So like White Walker up here, Frozen North, Winter is here, Casterly Rock, Lannister Red, like, all of the names are very kind of on theme, obviously. And then the highlighter palette looks like this. This is the Mother of Dragons highlighter palette. I think the packaging for this is absolutely gorgeous. It's got like dragon scales and it's all like shiny and 
three dimensional. Like how cool is that? And this one is actually very lightweight. It's like cardboard packaging, which closes magnetically. And again, you get a mirror and then you get three sh shades of highlighter. One thing I do just want to say about this is I feel like these are going to be too dark for me and I have got fake tan on right now. So if I was like at my normal skin color, this palette would definitely not be for me. I would say it's more for like medium to deep skin tones. I'm also going to swatch this in comparison to some other highlighters that I've got just in case you want to like get an idea. So you have Drogon, Viserion and Rhaegal, which I think are the name of Daenerys Three Dragons. I might just have pulled that out of my arse and be making it up. I don't know. They've got like the dragon eggs printed on, which I think is so cute. Just looking at these eyeshadows, they look so gorgeous. You get not very many mattes. There's just three mattes in here and then the rest of them are shimmers. I'm going to swatch them in fives on the back of my hand. Um, so I'm going to start with like the top and then just work my way down. Okay, the black is kind of like a matte black, but it's got like glitters in it. Oh, that one's like a duochrome. Holy crap. That is a pigmented black. And the glitters in it are like a light pale blue and silver glitter. That was pigmented as hell. Okay, next one, White Walker. Okay, that one's kind of like a duochrome bluey white color. It reminds me of like the Anastasia Moonchild palette type vibe. Next one is called Frozen North. Okay, that is that one there, another shimmer. There was a little bit of like crumbly fallout on there, but that is super pigmented as well. Then last two are Free Folk. That one's a silver. Oh wow, that silver's gorgeous. And then the final one is Hard Home, which is the round one. It's like a duochromey white with a bit of like peachy tint in there. That shade, just that one, was a little bit chunky. So that is the little kind of top section. This shade was a tiny bit crumbly. I don't know if you can see there at the bottom, but once I kind of like blended it out over a few times, it went away. Onto the second section, which looks really pretty. So we have a matte brown called Nymeria. That is that one there. It's like a really pretty kind of warm toned brown. We then have Winter is Here, which is like a dark kind of chocolatey brown color. That one doesn't really have much shimmer in it at all. It's kind of like a satin finish. I'm just gonna add like another little layer just to make it look a bit more neat on my hand. We then have Weirwood or Werewood Leaves, which is a purple. Again, that one is much more of a satin. It's not like super foiled like the other ones. So again, I'm just gonna do one more like pass over the top of that. Then we have The Sight, which is a shimmery green. Oh wow, okay. That's that one there. That one's definitely got a bit more like actual shimmer in it. You can see that there reflecting in the camera. Again, I'm just gonna do one more pass over it to like neaten it up a bit, cause that was a bit of a wonky swatch. And then the final one is the gold called Winterfell. Oh my God, that feels so smooth. Oh, okay, that is the best shade in the palette so far. That gold is incredible. So then I'm moving on to this section right here, which is more warm toned. The first shade is called Red Keep. Ooh, that is stunning. It's like a coppery orange. We then have Casterly Rock, which is like a bronze. That one is also super pigmented and stunning. Both of those were just like one dip into the palette. We then have House Lannister, which is a matte kind of like peachy color. Okay, that's that one there. Uh, it's quite a light shade, but it's still like decently pigmented for a matte. It feels nice and smooth. And then we have Lannister Red. This one feels a bit more like dry. Wow. That is a pigmented red. I feel like that's the type of kind of like burgundy red that could potentially stain your eyelids because that was just me dipping into the palette once and then just going backwards and forwards on my hand. And then the final shade is called King's Landing and it's like a yellow gold. Woo! Okay, that was literally just one swipe. Little bit crumbly again down the bottom here. And then the final section is this one down here. The first shade is called Stormborn and this looks beautiful. Oh, wow. Okay, that's not the type of color I would normally wear, but it's like a sparkly purple with like pinkish and blue like glitters in it. Then we have House Targaryen. All of these ones are shimmers actually. Wow, okay, that is another stunning gold, which is like a lighter gold. We then have Dothraki, which is kind of like a yellow, bright yellow gold with a slight like greenish undertone. We then have Bend the Knee, which is another like lilac color. Ooh, okay, that's another kind of duochrome-y one. It's definitely got a bit of kind of pink and 
light blue in there as well. And then the final one is called Bay of Dragons, which is a pink with like a peach reflect, I think. Again, that one has like a little bit of like crumbliness to it. All of the ones that are like the circular ones are all kind of like a little bit of a different formula. Um, but that is that shade there, it's really pretty. They've also got the Vice lipsticks, which are £17.50. There's four different shades. There's like a nude one, a red one, a gold one, and then like a dark kind of burgundy one. I didn't get my hands on any of the lipsticks, but um, they're just kind of like Urban Decay's standard formula for their Vice lipsticks, which I do really like. Um, the nude one is already sold out, and that's probably the one that I would have gone for, um, because the others, like, I don't really wear on a kind of regular basis. Then they also have the Glide On Eye Pencils, which are their 24-7 liners, which are £16 each. They've got a white one, a gold one, a blue one, and a black one, I think. And then the final thing they've got is a Lip and Cheek Stain, which is £19, which kind of reminds me of, like, Benefits Benetint. It's like a red stain that you can use on your cheeks or your lips. So far, just off the swatches, I'm actually really impressed. Like there wasn't a kind of like dud shade in here. Oh, I so nearly just dropped that. <sighs> Moving on to the highlighter palette. I'm just gonna swatch these three. So we have Drogon, which is the pink. I don't wanna ruin the egg. I'm gonna do it to the side. Viserion, I think, and Regal. So these are the three shades there. You know what, to be fair, I feel like I could probably just about get away with these two. Um, definitely the pink one, although like I'm not massively into kind of like colourful highlighters really anymore. So this is what the three of them look like. I think the gold one is probably going to be a bit too dark. Just in case you want something to compare it to, um, I have the Urban Decay Kristen Leanne palette here. Uh, if any of you had this, this is what the Kristen Leanne palette looks like. And then this is the... Uh, Mother of Dragons palette. And also as well, just for comparison, I have Becca Moonstone. And then compared to the palette, you can see that the Game of Thrones one is quite a lot darker. And then if you are a drugstore kind of gal, maybe you own my highlighter palette, just as a comparison, um, these are the shade differences. I would definitely say that this Urban Decay one is not really for pale skin. I'm just gonna take this gold shade from my palette and I'm also gonna swatch Becca Moonstone next to it. So that one is the gold from my palette. Um, as you can see, it's quite a lot lighter than this gold here. And then Becca Moonstone is even lighter. It's this shade right there. Okay, you know what? I'm gonna use the shade Drogon, which is the pink one, and I'm gonna kind of use this as a blush, even though it's definitely more of a highlighter. Okay, it's definitely more of a highlighter. <laughs> This is clearly not the brush to use because it's really not picking up much product. To be honest, that's not really doing too much to my face. Um, I feel like I would definitely need like a normal highlighter brush, but that shade doesn't really work as a blush. I kind of thought it would, but I think it's too light. So I'm then going to go in with the shade Viserion. Um, this shade here is definitely going to be too dark for me, so I'm going to skip out on that one. But let's try the gold. Yeah, even on my brush you can see that it's quite dark. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh, but then look, when I look to the front, you can see that it kind of makes like a patch where you can see that it's too dark. That's such a shame. It gives off a really nice glow, but it's definitely too dark for me. I'm not gonna put it on my nose just because I know that that will look a little bit silly if it's too dark, but I am gonna put it on my brow bone and my inner corners. I'm just gonna take a bit of the Becca one down my nose. Okay, so personally for the highlighter palette, it is a pretty palette, but I wouldn't spend 25 pounds on this just because I'm not really a fan of the pinky sort of shade and this shade would be too dark for me. However, if you do have um, a kind of like medium or deep skin tone and you're really into Game of Thrones and even if you just like the look of this and you wanna maybe use the other shades as eyeshadow, then that's totally fine. I just personally don't really do that because I've got so many other eyeshadows that using a highlighter as eyeshadow, like I just, I would never get through all of it. Right, moving on to my eyes. I know that all my brushes look dirty because I, re I really I really need to wash my brushes. Um, but even though they're like stained, they don't actually have like any product on them. I think you would definitely need a desk to like put this palette on. I don't think it's a very like travel palette. The one that is the most like appealing to me, this section is like this one is just calling my name because I love that shade so much. And I wanna try and incorporate this like pretty teal color. So I'm gonna start off with the transition shade, which is called Nymeria, I think. And I'm just gonna put this 
Whoa, okay, that's a lot darker than I thought it was gonna be. Okay, that was all from one dip, that was nice. Okay, that shade is really nice. It's blending nicely, it's really pigmented, that's for sure. And then taking a more flat brush, and I'm gonna take the shade that's called The Sight, which is the green, and I'm gonna pack this on my outer and inner corners. Oh wow, that is really gorgeous. I don't really know why I've gone for the green, but I kind of just really was interested to try it. That's definitely like a royal green. That shade is gorgeous. I'm kind of just going carefully with it and not just like slapping it on there because I feel like if I was to do it in a rush, I would get some fallout onto my face. So I'm just really like pressing it onto my eyelid. As much as I dislike green eyeshadow, it's actually a really pretty green. And it went on really, like, smoothly. If you watch Game of Thrones, let me know in the comments who your favourite character is. I think mine is Tyrion Lannister. I really like him. I think he's funny. However, I kind of forgot to say, like, Game of Thrones is definitely not a PG programme. If you're, like, relatively young, I would not recommend watching it because there's a lot of, like, nudity. There's a lot of violence. There's a lot of blood and, like, gore and just like pretty much like porn in it. Like I didn't realize there would be so many naked people, but apparently that's just that's just the way it is. And then going back in with some of that transition shade, I'm just gonna blend over the edges. Oh my God, this blend though. If I do say so myself, I'm not like the most skilled at eyeshadow, but that green is just blended seamlessly with the, um, the transition shade. And then gonna take a much more kind of like concentrated brush. And I'm gonna take the shade Winterfell, which is the goldy bronzy. It's definitely more of like a cool toned gold, I think. And I'm gonna try and apply this with a brush. However, oh my God. It's kind of like flaky, but when you actually press it in, the flakes entirely disappear and it just kind of turns into shimmer. However, I have a feeling that this will work so much better with a finger. I'm gonna take a tiny, like I literally picked up the tiniest bit. Yes. Like, look at that. Oh my God, this look kind of matches my nails. Oh my God, that is so pretty. Wait, I'm gonna blend it out in a sec. Let me just do the other eye. Okay, I do now have a little bit of fallout on my cheeks. Let's just get rid of that. I'm just gonna like blend over the edges of that. Okay, I've now got a little bit more fallout. <laughs> Honestly, so far, I'm really impressed. I was not expecting to like this palette as much as I've liked it. I know that sounds like I kind of had like preconceptions, um, but I kind of did. I don't know, like looking at it in the pictures, it didn't seem like it was gonna be that exciting, but I actually think it's such a versatile palette. Like you can pretty much do like, well, you could do like a green smoky eye, blue smoky eye, purple smoky eye, like you could do a gold look, a warm toned look, a, like a cool toned look, a full on black smoky eye, like silver, like there's so many colours in this that I actually think it's a really versatile palette. Very chunky packaging is the downside, but I mean, if you're a hardcore Game of Thrones fan, so far it's really good. On my lower lash line, I'm gonna take a bit of this shade, which is called Wherewood Leaves. Will it go? Probably not, but we're gonna do it anyway. I would definitely say this one's more of like a satin. I'm actually gonna take a bit of this shade, which is called Stormborn, and I'm just gonna add that over the top. Ooh, that one's really pretty. These are definitely very like royal colors. I feel like this is a very kind of royal eye look right now. Maybe I should be on that Iron Throne. I'm gonna take the shade called Free Folk, which is like a bright silver, and I'm gonna put some of this on my inner corners. Yeah, maybe not. That one's a bit too cool toned. You know what? Let's take instead the shade King's Landing, which is like a warm yellowy gold. Okay, that's a little bit better. Okay, so I feel like if I add any more eyeshadow to this look, it's probably just gonna look like a bit of a disaster. But um, honestly, I'm really impressed with the colors that I picked. Uh, I didn't use anywhere near all of the eyeshadows. Like, can you see how beautifully everything is blended together? And that like, kind of taupey gold shimmer is so beautiful. I've definitely got eyeshadow in my eyeballs though. Struggles of being a contact lens wearer. Okay, I'm just gonna add eyeliner and mascara and then I'll be right back. I'm using the NYX Epic Ink Liner and for mascara I'm using the Rimmel One Deluxe Volume. Wow, don't you just love it when your eyeliner leaks and kind of like bleeds into your eyeshadow? Yeah, I love that. Okay, instead I'm gonna use the NYX Matte Liner. Then I'll be back once I fix this mess. Okay, so I have returned with my mascara and liner done after a bit of a mishap that I had with my liner where it kind of like leaked everywhere. 
Um, but for my lips, I'm just going to finish it off with a standard lipstick. I'm going to use one of the Urban Decay ones just because I thought, why the heck not? Um, I don't have any of the Game of Thrones lipsticks, but I thought I would use one of these anyway because I haven't used this in ages. This is actually from the Kristen, Le Kristen Leanne collaboration and it's a comfort matte in the shade Bun Bun. I feel like this nude is almost a bit too dark for my eyes because my eyes are quite dark and it's quite a dark nude. One second. So I just lightened it up with a bit of the Soap and Glory Sexy Mother Pucker Lipstick in the shade Fifth Avenue. So this is the overall finished look. So let me know down below what you think of the overall look um, and what you think of the products in general. Are you guys going to be getting your hands on them? I will link them down below in the description box and like the full collection and everything. Just before we go, I'm going to answer a question of the day because I do this in every single video. If you have any questions about me or like for me about anything really in general, leave them down below with the hashtag question of the day and I always answer one in my videos. Question of the day comes from Ellen Baird and she said, how do you curl your hair so perfectly? Lots of love. I've had so many questions about my hair recently. It's actually like second day curled hair today so it's kind of dropped out, but I did like recurl these like front pieces. I actually curl my hair with my straighteners. So I literally just like take my straighteners like this, I clamp a bit of hair and then I twist it like that and keep twisting it. Okay, I don't know, I can't do it with my fingers. I should really get my straightness to demonstrate. But I twist it and then just like drag it down like this. And then it like forms a curl. And then I kind of do it so some bits I will curl this way and then other bits I will take and I'll curl the other way. So like going towards my face so that it kind of like messes it up a little bit. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much how I curl my hair. Anyway, I'm gonna go now. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. If you have any other video suggestions or things that you wanna see, let me know down below, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.